Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. This time we're going to be looking at an Inspector Cause by JB Priestley. Uh, brilliant play. Um, we'll be looking at it in three areas, the way it's written, the themes and the characters. Uh, the reason I start with the way it's written is because it's really good to try and get your head in around, should I say, what the writer is trying to do. And then that kind of informs the way you look at the themes and the way you look at characters, because you can kind of see which characters the um, writer is choosing to use as a vehicle for certain things. So it's good to focus on that. I'll go into a little more about essay uh, um, but perfection or essay kind of detailing in, in another video as well. But obviously there's the, the old ones, the seven um, original tutorial videos that will give you a good start. So here we look at, first of all, the way it's written. Well, there's a big difference in the, the time it's set to the time it was written. So obviously he's, what's actually on stage is basically set in 1912, but he's writing it in 1945 at the end of the war. So it's a real change. So even for people after the war, you know, this would have seemed like a real bygone era. You know, this had been a memory of something to them because obviously over the war, the, all of this would have been largely a relevant to a point because of the way that the war changed the way people interacted in in, in Britain at the time um, and it's a warning it's a warning of basically how things were and also sorry using that time cross contrast between the setting and the time of writing is a real warning to people to um, I, I invite them not to go back to the past you know to really bear in mind that things are bad and we don't want to go there again we've got to change so it's always stressing this time of rethinking an opportunity to actually make that change actually build something and maybe society took it on heart at large you know with introduction of the NHS and um, job seekers allowances etc etc um, you know maybe there was a lot better provision for the people who were kind of uh, lower down in societal ranks um, it's all set again in one place which kind of builds up a lot of the tension really kind of makes it come through that they're in the kind of this kettle house and you know just being in this one place kind of shows you again that the one thing that's always stressed is that microcosm you know what's going on here is going on as a representation for the whole country so it's something that everyone needs to learn from and it's something that will affect everyone because uh, the one house there could be any house especially in the upper classes who would have been going to the theater at the time to to watch such a thing um again just to really drill that home on the setting and time of writing i mean Pri priestley's bringing back an era um that people kind of accepted you know there, there wasn't really much that people were able to do about this um, class division that was very prevalent at the time you know between the upper class and then the middle class and the lower class and um, it's also obviously uh, against ideologies it's like kind of set up of ideologies of uh, the socialism that Priestley would champion and obviously the capitalism uh, or early capitalism that was prevalent during um, the late uh, 19th early 20th century so you want to think about all those kind of contrasts and the setting of the time I mean if you if you mention a couple of points about that you're going to be you're going to be onto a good thing so the language and dialects throughout um basically we don't have too many but we've got a real sense that you know these are well-to-do people and we can see from mr burling's kind of cut like, excuse me slight hints in his accent etc and some of the things he says and even just the directness with some of the things he says we see that he's not fully from this class that his wife is from uh, and obviously it's kind of put so in the text as well and his children have grown up into that world above they're more like his um mother in the in the sorry more like their mother should i say in the way that they actually communicate with each so in with each with each other um so basically we we realize that they're both of a kind of upper class even though the mothers of a higher class etc and then there's kind of like a you know people because it will show you that people will work towards trying to be upper class or work trying trying to be in this level of society but as a character and as a person the person it makes you it might not be the best thing for you um so the actions the accents obviously show the class um like with mr burling we hire the mr burling and and also shows their standing uh, and the authority and intimidation like you'll notice uh, a lot of the time the language and the words that mr burling uses especially at the beginning to try and intimidate the inspector it's a lot of name dropping and there's a lot of kind of um bragging about self you know to try and make the inspector or should i say remind the inspector of what he presumes is the inspector's place but obviously as we know by the end of the play uh, the inspector isn't from earth so there is no place quote unquote for him um the lighting and the timing throughout really important obviously the spotlights on the characters and obviously when the the inspector kind of comes in the lighting changes i think and when the we open up and we've kind of got this set kind of red light like almost danger a reddish light you know kind of pinkish glow uh this kind of danger just to start us off just with this feeling of something's going to go on ease and then obviously when the lights come on it's like the inspector's inspecting them under a spotlight etc um so look out obviously for the scene changes etc you know where it actually happens the timing of those um like one of them happens when uh, eric just walks back in uh, when they've you know just discussed the father who the father of the 
if his child was, etc. Um, and also when the inspector first comes in, that interruption to uh, Mr. Burling's speech about how great capitalism is. Um, and also look at how when people come and go, I mean, um, Gerald leaves and returns, you know, at the perfect timing, etc. You know, this is just all part of his craft to give us this 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 full story and picture in, um, sorry, Priestley's craft to give us this full story and picture in such a short space of, of time because it all happens over a night. Um, so in the structure then, yep, it all happens overnight. It's a very kind of short time frame. You know, it feels quite intimate for it. He goes through inspecting all of them and in, in, um, asking questions of all of them, interrogating all of them, whichever way you want to put it. And basically it's uh, it's all set up uh, after this, uh, sorry, just before the phone call of the real uh, death uh, of Eva Smith or of the young girl that's actually been called up. So it's kind of really, really kind of loops back on itself. So you want to get the idea of that round the structure. It comes back round. We, we go through something and then because there's no consequence, some of the characters just go back to where they were. Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. And then we start again. And, you know, we're just left to think that this kind of recurs. And there might be a lot that Priestley's saying in that, you know, there's a lot of people who haven't learned. And there's, you know, maybe even for the whole thing, we, we've actually been through this idea for maybe there was another change that we could have had after World War One, but we haven't fully realized it. There's a lot he could be saying in there. Um, he goes through them all one by one. You know, he goes one line of inquiry at a time. So he really wanted to kind of pick them out. And that's good just to mention that he's going to slowly show the audience like the breakdown of each person. It's not just kind of he comes and goes, you're all responsible and runs out again. He wants to break through them one by one so we can feel the different levels that we believe are responsible. And also there's certain things that we see or we relate to that we might find of kind of more of a, a, a starker sin or things that we might not dislike. I mean, you can pick who you think is the most... Um, Arisable of all the characters, uh, my personal is uh, Mrs. Burling. Can't stand her, but in that way, obviously she's she's built as a great character. Um, and obviously that sense of building guilt and shared responsibility is one of the key themes. You know, that's to try and to try and get that across. And it's it's put to us by the structure of going through each one individually, showing how responsible they ill each were. And also, there's a really interesting point that you might want to notice here. I should really put a question mark here because this is obviously like if you can talk about this, do it. Um, there's setups, even though we kind of got this stereotype of at the beginning um, you know just being this materialistic girl etc etc we've got this setup at the beginning where she's got a little intuition where she can see or she knows that Gerald's up to something and so she kind of sees through so there's kind of been a setup there we know that she's going to have this insight so when she comes to actually show us this insight on a grander scale with her acceptance of the um, inspector's ideas we can really see that she's she had that perception we knew she had it so it kind of sets us up for seeing her that way and also um, I mean the mother Mrs. Burling's uh, her arrogance on the name I mean that's a really great setup I think because you know she's asked well, I'm Mrs. Burling don't you know probably not in such a lame accent but um, the uh, at the end you know it's the name uh, or the uh, kind of arrogance with the name is what kind of is a huge undoing because it's Eva's quote unquote use of her name as Burling that actually kind of you know um, prejudices her against uh, the Eva's case so that kind of setup with the name being such a you know something you're so proud of and then falling on it it's a great setup as well it kind of um, builds a real a sense of intrigue throughout or at least it rewards re-watching and re-reading uh, re excuse me uh, 